can't beat the ground truthing, as we call it. People on the ground, or in this case, under the water, making human-based measurements. So we've got a team of science divers. The first team are running through as a group of five. And the first two ahead are swimming along counting fish, with one of them counting all the fish nearby in, in, in a region, say within 10 meters, everything. What kind of fish is it? How big is it? What's going on? And the second one is looking much broader for all the bigger species. And the three running behind are looking at the algae, all the stuff on the bottom. So they're looking at the algae um, and they're looking at the coral and all the other life that lives on the very bottom. So they go out, do a big long survey template, like a pattern, and swim back to the same place and count it all again to make sure they see exactly what's happening at certain depths and how healthy it is. So it's a proper scientific record. At the same time, we also put in a, a pair of divers doing things called photo mosaics. Uh, they'll be back soon. And it's a beautiful thing because there's two cameras running together underwater, video cameras. And it means that we can take a sort of 3D image of all of the coral in a big marked out template, which they prepare first. So they know exactly where they're going to swim. And they can tell the health of that coral as a sample of what the rest of the reef is. So we can see, for instance, the effects of global warming. And I'm gonna take you all upstairs. And you get a good feeling for things here. There's the sub and all of the cranes. Five work boats. And of course, all five work boats are out working today, <laughs> but they'll be back soon. And we'll go up, there's even another deck up here. Another deck, we'll go up one more. And here we are. There's another pile of equipment here. You see, we've got, uh, uh, let's see, behind me here, there's the rest of the drop cam, drop cameras. There's all of the pelagic rigs. And thankfully, Sarah has unveiled so this a decompression chamber. Look at that thing. It's the chamber. It looks smaller than it is. Even somebody as tall as nearly two meters can actually fit into this whole thing. Um, if you would like, I can open it up, but I just need to get the pressure off. Yes, would please. Would you like me to? Sounds good. When, yeah. well, to have a, a recompression chamber when you're diving in remote places. And we're very lucky because Sarah is trained as a diver medical technician. There's a few of us on board that are also trained up as diver medical technicians. So that way we can be completely independent if we really do need to use it. It does look very small, right? But that's two people there. Yeah, it looks bigger once you look inside. Very cool. <laughs> it does. And the idea is that you don't just mimic the conditions of being underwater, but whilst you are underwater, you breathe oxygen. Now, you don't breathe oxygen as you would breathe in normal air. You breathe oxygen 100%. Now, you do that with this fancy looking mask I'm not sure if you can all see it have to beautiful thing twist it around so it's basically what fighter jet pilots would wear inside the plane but then in this case you're a fighter pilot but then lying quite I, I hopefully it. comfortably on you a stretcher see, you see that everybody this is a dream job you can be a submarine pilot you can be thank you sarah with the help of Sarah, you can be, you know, like a, like I say, a fighter pilot on a submarine. You can be, you can be dead safe. You can have any job you want. Can be at the front line of science. It's one of my messages that I always love to tell people on a, on a trip like this that you don't have to be a scientist to work in on scientific projects in challenging and remote and beautiful places. Because guess what? Scientists need a lot of help. They need people like me and you and doctors and plumbers and electricians and boat drivers and IT experts. You know, we need all of this support to help science run. And in fact, uh, the global numbers are about three or four support teams for each scientist. So if you fancy working in some exciting places, uh, be a scientist or join us as a support staff like Beth right here. Hey, everyone. Come on, Beth, tell us what you do. Um, I'm here with the media team. I'll be here for six weeks. So I am the digital image technician on board, which basically means at the end of each day, the cam ops bring me their footage. I'll copy it over to two hard drives for safekeeping. We like to keep duplicate copies that way. If something goes wrong with the first one, we have a backup so we don't lose any of the incredible footage they get. 
And then I also go through all the footage and send some of our best stuff back to the social media team at um, Nat Geo headquarters. Thank you, Mike. So they can post that on social media and kind of update you on what we've all been doing every day. And then I'm also the stills photographer on board. So same thing, um, basically running around all day, photographing all of these wonderful people and then sending that uh, those photos back to the HQs that they can post on social media.